In the last video, we explored the CSS transition properties. In this video, we're going to see how we can put them to work to make some really cool little animations. Hi there and welcome. My name is Kevin and here at my channel we learn how to make the web and how to make it look good while we're at it. If you missed the last video, I suggest you go and check it out where we look just at the transition properties themselves and how all of them work. And in this video, we're going to be looking at a more realistic example. And yeah, I think it's going to be a really fun video, so let's go jump right into it. So in this video, we're going to be looking at how to use CSS transitions in a real world type of environment to do some interesting things. So we're going to be starting with this here, where as you can see, there's no animation there. If I click on more information, the information just appears. I have a heart that gets smaller and bigger. The color just turns on and off. And then I have a less information button here. And then that just does that. And especially for this more information, less information thing, it's really jarring. Um, it's not good for user experience because all of a sudden things start happening and then um, going away. So we can improve the user experience by adding animation to there. And even with this, just the heart growing and then the color changing, it just makes it a little bit smoother and, and nicer. Um, so what we're going to be doing is making it like this, where on hover, there's this nice little transition effect. I can move that up. The more information disappears, less information animates in. If I click that, the more information comes in. And you can see those only happen after the fact. So the, both of those animations um, have a delay on them to help, uh, again, with the overall user experience. So let's uh, take a jump in and see how we did all that. Okay, so the first thing I want to say for this video is just um, we are starting with a lot of markup done. There is some JavaScript done in this and obviously uh, a whole ton of CSS just to style it. The focus of this is really just using transitions on a site like this. If you want to see it, the code pen is shared down in the description below so you can go and see how I've done it, but I don't actually have a video showing how I've coded this card up. I really just want to focus on uh, the animation and stuff like that. And when I'm looking at certain things, if it's important for the transition, I will look at how a little bit more in depth on how the code was written for that specific thing. Um, so the first thing I want to do is right now on hover, I have it so it's sort of re, you know, we're, we're keeping our card, but the whole thing is shrinking down in size. Um, and this is just to sort of show that it is an interactive card in some way. So when the user gets their mouse on top, something like that happens. So here, if I go and I find my card, or just to show you the markup a little bit here actually will help. I have um, a div called cards, so this would work even if you had multiple cards. Uh, inside of here I have my single card. So what I'm doing is, and then here I have my card header. So what we see on the screen right now is my card header. And then when I click here, the card header is shrinking away and it's showing us some body text here. So what, uh, what I'm doing is, we're, when I hover on top of here, the card header is changing a little bit. So if we go and take a look, we have my card header here that has a whole bunch of styles on it, and I'm using absolute positioning just to make life a little easier uh, to create some of these. And on hover, I'm just switching the top, bottom, right, and left all from zero to 25. So that's giving me this little effect right there. So it's pushing them in by 25 pixels on all the sides. Now, if you watched the last video, you'll know this isn't a best practice. In general, we don't want to be transitioning these. We want to try and only transition transforms and opacity. And most of the transitions I'm doing this are using those, even though there's another one that isn't. There's ways around this. There's other things that you could do to get a similar effect. But, you know, we, we can't always, as much as we want to follow best practice at times, you might need to... Um, Try some other things, and if you do want more information down in the description below, there's a link talking a lot of detail about why you want to stick with transforms and opacity. Uh, one thing that's important is not to put the transition here, even though this is where things are changing. Because if I came and I put transition here, transition, let's just do 500 milliseconds. Um, when I do that, you'll see it's going to transition when I hover on top, but not when my mouse leaves. So there's the transition and then not there because right now this transition is only coming in for the hover. So when I hover, there's a transition, but when I'm not hovering, there's no transition. So just make sure you put your transition over here. Now I can write just transition like that and we can see it's working and it's working in both directions now. This isn't really great though. Um, this is going to have the default timing function. This is going to have the default of all so it's trying to animate everything or transition everything and we want to avoid doing that because already I'm transitioning some things I shouldn't be um, by having this on all it's giving the CPU even more work to do so we want to specify that we want to only animate these four things on out of all of this 
So here where I have transition, what I can do is I can say top, let's make it a bit shorter, 300 milliseconds, and I'm gonna do an ease out, I like ease out. Um, so now if I come here and I hover over, but the top one there is doing a nice little slide in and out. Now I wanna do all four of them, so I can do that by comma separating them. If you have a lot of things to do, like I hear, here I have four, it would make a really long line of CSS, but I can just push return and write the next one. So left, 300 milliseconds, ease. Out, comma, and then let's just copy and paste this because it makes life easier. Bottom, right. <clears throat> and now we have all four of them going again. So it's working on all four once again. Um, but this time it's only trying to do those and you could technically give them different types of timing functions or you could give them different times even, but it would look a little strange I think in this case. Great. Um, so let's keep going. Now here, when I click more information, now you can see that the bottom is already animating because I've told it that we can transition the bottom. So we're transitioning the bottom and when I'm clicking on that, what it's doing, it's actually pretty far down. Um, here my bottom is just switching to 50%. So my bottom is sliding up to the 50% mark and then sliding back down. So I don't need to add anything else in there. It's just working on its own. So that's good and dandy. Um, and when I do that, it reveals the information. So the thing I like about this is you're revealing the information. So you're showing where the information was. It's not an instant change. It's just coming up and sliding up and showing us that there are things there. And it also then lets you know what's going to happen if you do less information. You can sort of guess that it's going to return to the previous state. Um, now this more information button, when I click on it, it just disappears. When I click on less information, it just disappears. So that's not terrible. It doesn't bother me too much, but we could make that a little bit nicer with some transitions on that as well. So if I go all the way back up here, um, here I have my more info and less info. So this is my more info and that is my less info. And the way I'm doing this is um, my more info was just where it happens to be. And my less info, I did a margin left auto on it. So that's just why it's all the way on the right side. And I've translated it off. So if I take this transform off, actually, let's just put this to zero so we can see it where it is. So there's my less information right there. Now, say I did 50% on this, it's pushing it 50% that way, 100%, and it pushes it further off, but it's not quite all the way. We can probably get away with like 120% even, just to get it out of view. And there it goes, we can't see it anymore. Uh, on my header, I also have an overflow of hidden, so it's that's why we can't see it, it's not sticking out the side there. So what I want is I want those to animate. Actually, I want, let's go up. I have both cards here where most of the styling, or cards, most of the, the info buttons here is where most of the styling is. Um, so what I'm going to use this for is let's give them both the same transition just so it's consistent. So transition of transform. Um, how long? I don't know. We'll try 500 milliseconds and once again an ease out. Um, so that's going to do the one thing of it. It's going to change when I click. You can see that the less information when I click here, you can see it slide in. When I click that, it slides out. And here it's gonna slide down and then slide back up. This one's less obvious just because it's moving in the opposite direction of the original animation. So it just sort of sort of disappears, but you can see it sliding in and out. Um, what I like about this is again, it shows, it sort of catches the user's attention just to alert them that this button is gone. But more importantly, this is creating a little bit of animation just to make the user more aware that there is a way to close this down now because it's not in the same spot as before. There's no big X that's appearing. So I just want to make it obvious that that's there. Um, the other thing we do want is the, the background color to change. So here I'm transforming this ease out. I'll do a comma and we'll say background. This can be pretty fast. We'll say 250 milliseconds. So now when I hover on top, there we go, we can see it's sort of just a smoother little, and even maybe it could just make this 200. I don't want it to be super obvious. I want it to go pretty fast, but just to smooth things up a little bit. And there we go, we can see that coming in. Cool, good. I think that looks pretty good. Um, so then the same thing should happen here. Now, one thing I'd like to do is when I click on this, the buttons are coming in and out at the same time. I don't really want this to slide in as it's moving up. I want it to only slide in once the animation or the transition is finished. And the same thing here, once this is finished dropping down, I want that to come in. 
Uh, so that's why here, here, I have two different spots. I have my more info and less info just because I want to do something different with these two. So my more info, this button down here, I actually want to put a transition delay on that. Transition delay of, let's say, 500 milliseconds, and we'll see what happens. Um, except, whoop, you'll notice now that transition delay is doing something I don't want to happen. When I go on top, it's taking half a second for the background color to change, which is obviously not a good thing. So here, I'm going to comma separate that, comma, uh, or my background's the second one, so comma zero milliseconds. And now that should have no delay when I hover, but when I click, see how there was a delay there? So it's going up and then it's sliding off. And then when I click this, actually I don't really want that delay there though, right? I don't want, I want more info to go away at the beginning. So what I should probably do here, um, this one should probably actually be, let's remove you from here and put you on this one. So now if I click that, it disappears. And then once the animation is done, the less information slides in. That makes a lot more sense. Um, so we can see it goes like that, and then this slides in. But that creates a problem, because now when I click on less information, it just sits there and then disappears, which is really weird. Luckily, we can get around that. Um, so this transition delay, actually, I'm gonna take away from here. I only want that transition delay to happen when my card is open. So when my card is open, I want there to be a delay. But when I click this, it's removing the class of uh, open from my card here. Uh, from the card header. So we can actually, let's just, I'll show you what's actually going on. So here I have my card header. And when I click show information, we're getting card open. And when I click less information, you can see it's just going back to the regular card. So card open and then the regular card. So what I want is I want the delay to be on it when the card is open, but I don't want the delay there the rest of the time. So let's go find my card open. Uh, card open, more info, less info. So on here I can put my transition delay. So that means when I click this and it adds the class, there's a delay. But when I click this, it's just gonna go away right away. So when I click that, and then it comes in, and then the other way around. Good, okay, so I'm happy with how that looks. Uh, more information, that's okay. Less information, actually, you know, mm, I could put a little delay on that. Um, so I want, before I took the delay off, but I think we we're better off with it. Um, so let's put that transition delay back on. But this is the opposite case scenario. I want this to delay when it goes up. Uh, no, I don't want it to delay when it goes up. I want it to delay when it comes down. See how that looked nice? Like if I do that, and now it comes up after. So when my card is closed, I want to have a delay. When I don't have my open on there, I want a delay. But when I have my open, I want no delay. So I can just do transition delay of zero over here. So, whoops, I'm just gonna put MS just to make sure. So there's no delay, it just dies. This slides in, I click that. Once the card is full screen, the little more information box comes in again. And I really like showing this example because it shows that you can use delays in interesting ways um, to help make your site a little bit more cool and have some fun effects in it without actually needing to get into the real CSS animation properties. Just using transitions, you can still use delays in interesting ways and in practical ways that are, are fun um, and cool to use. So that looks pretty good. Um, the last thing I want to look at is on this to play around with my heart a little bit because I don't really like how the heart is working. I'm going to make that heart a bit bigger uh, just to make it easier for us to see right now. So I did use a size CSS variable here. So if I change that, everything should get bigger. And there we go. Let's make it even bigger now, actually, just for demo purposes. So this is, you know, you could come in here and, and heart the post if you wanted to. Um, it will stay, whoops, hearted the whole time. So to do that, and actually I should move it. You can see the bottom sticks out a little there. I should move it up margin bottom. Let's move it up a tiny bit. There we go. Um, so. I like this effect, I like this little thing, but we can obviously make that a little better. Um, so here on my heart icon, let's go find it, heart icon, you can see there's where the background is pink. 
And then when the heart gets checked, the heart icon becomes red. So, and if you'd like to know how I, I built this, there's a video up on my Patreon now for patrons who, uh, where I showed them actually how I built this heart out. Um, so you could always go and check that out. There's a link to it in the description below. So what we can do is, um, for this, I want to do a few things. The growing of it, I want to make that a little bit more fun. And obviously I want the color to transition. So let's take a look at my heart icon. Cause I think, is that where the scale? No, my heart icon is where the background color is happening. And um, the scale's happening here. Let's just make that a little bit bigger. Well, we'll do like a 1.2. I just want it to get a lot bigger for now, for just for demo purposes again. I think that's too much normally, but that's okay. So we'll start with the background color because that's the easier one. And background color, so it's on my heart icon. So right here, I'm just gonna have heart icon. Oh, I was in the right spot. Whoops, the checked background is red. So right here, I just wanna do a transition background and we'll say like, to 150 milliseconds. I want this to be really fast. I just want it to be enough that there's a, there is an animation going on, a really subtle one, but I want just something there so it's not as harsh as the, the instant changeover. So that's, that's it, just something really quick. And again, one of the biggest problems I see is people doing something like 500 or, or longer on stuff like this. And it just makes this really smooth animation. It doesn't really feel like you're checking it. It's like, Ooh, it's this long, long thing. So just by speeding that up a little bit, 100, 125, 150, um, it takes the harshness of the ch color change out, but it makes it still seem like it's uh, almost instantaneous, which is good. So that's cool. And then I just want to make this a little better. So I think we can do that by uh, my heart itself, where my scale is. So on my heart, what we'll a transition for transform. Um, I'm gonna do this at like 300 milliseconds. I want to be pretty fast. And you can see it's growing and then it turns on and off. But I think the growing thing, we can make it a little bit more fun, right? Let's do an inspect on there. Let's go and find my transition. That's my checkbox, my heart. Oh, well, let's just write in uh, ease here then. I don't want that. This will let me, the fun fun of dev tools and stuff here, you can see that it's rotated. Um, there's my ease. So I just wanna take this ease and let's give it a bit more of a, um, something. I want it to get a little bit bigger and then shrink back down. So you can see it's bigger and then normal, bigger and normal. Not too much, I want it to be pretty subtle. So once I've done that down here, I have my cubic bezier. I can just copy that cubic bezier and replace the ease. And let's close this out so we don't have that rotation thing on there. You can see it, little subtle, subtle, subtle. It's very subtle. Maybe I should have made that a little bigger. Just try 1.5 on this. And maybe a 0.5. There we go. It's just this really subtle, like it gets bigger and then shrinks back just a tiny bit. A really subtle thing, almost like a, a single heart throb. You know, that type of thing. Really, really subtle, but this nice little bouncing animation. And there's the CSS transitions at work. So I hope you liked that. If you have any questions about what I did, don't be shy, leave a comment down below. If you liked the video, hit the thumbs up button. I just wanna say thank you to my patrons for supporting me and making these videos possible. Without you guys, it just wouldn't be happening. If you haven't yet subscribed to this channel, please consider subscribing because there's at least one video that comes out every single week like this one where we're exploring HTML and CSS and sometimes JavaScript in really fun ways. And of course, until next time, don't forget to make your corner of the internet just a little bit more awesome.